Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the epic finale of a Rome 2 Siege Battle. So I'm just going to come out and say it. These players are better than you, okay? <laughs> These players are way better than you. You're, cr you're crap, all right? You're garbage. You're garbage. Well, if you don't agree with that assessment, if you think I'm wrong, put your money where your mouth is. Prove me wrong. Join the tournaments and see if you'll be the cream of the crop, the last one standing. It's time to test your steel in battle. So yeah, uh, you can join these tournaments. It's run by an organization called Total War League. They host tournaments all the time. All you got to do is join their disc Discord and get involved and you know form a team and, and join and have fun. Even if you're not going to play in the tournament, check it out because maybe you want to just follow your favorite team or be a part of the community. Again, check out the Discord linked in the video description. So what we're going to do uh, before we jump into this epic finale, there's multiple games, so you'll see another video of this uh, finale. Uh, but yeah, what we'll do is we'll go over how the rules work uh, in terms of faction selection, uh, and then we'll uh, talk about the teams, the team names, you know, their stats and everything, and then we'll get the battle started. If you already know the rules and you just want to get straight to the action, don't worry. I'll have YouTube uh, chapter set up so you can just skip ahead and I don't have to hear it from you I don't have to hear about how I went on and on and on in the intro okay you can just skip ahead okay anyway so for the rest of you guys who want to figure out how this works because it is important to understanding who wins this tournament it's the fact that this is a point system so factions so the way it works is that you gain points through winning and factions are worth different points so, for example, Rome here is considered a very good faction. No surprise. It's Rome. They literally controlled all of the known world. Uh, so, yeah, they um, they are worth negative points. No surprise. The crappier factions are worth more points. They're like positive, like plus four. Like those nomad horse step factions. You know what I mean? They're going to be worth like plus four. So, it's not necessarily all only about winning which yeah obviously you have to win to gain points but it's also what kind of points are you going to be gaining through your victories for example i played in one of these tournaments with my friend ruback uh we nearly got into the playoffs with a negative record we were like two and maybe like three and five two and five it was really bad but our two victories we played with some of the crappiest factions and it slingshot us near the top because again, it's not necessarily about your record. It's more about your points that you earn through your victories. So that's important to understand because um, unless they, there, there is a potential that they could tie here in terms of points, but what's going to happen here, it's whoever has the most points. So like, for example, uh, let's say one team wins this round and the other team wins the other round. It's whoever got the most points. It's not even though it's technically a one-one tie. It's whoever got the most points. Or if one faction wins both rounds, it really doesn't matter. The points don't come in, right? The other faction won both rounds. You know, uh, so it, it's a it's a cool system that helps with like unit selection and i believe the other rule and i could be mistaken but i'm pretty sure this is the case you can only use a faction once during the tournament that might reset during the playoffs but i know the regular season you can only use one faction once so you got to be very strategic about what factions you use and it makes the tournament way more interesting and dynamic because you've got factions you know many factions ranging from different uh, the, the versatility of said faction you know what I mean so yeah that's how it works guys so for example in this battle uh, the attacking team and again we'll go over the faction names but just to keep it clear and simple the attacking team with Rome and Massilia Massacely sorry Massacely I, I get those always mixed up they have negative five points the defenders uh, the defenders have negative six points with Bowie and Tylus so that is how, so essentially it, it's not, again, it doesn't necessarily matter too much. If one faction wins both battles we're about to watch, the points don't really matter. But if there is a tie one, one, it comes down to who has the most points. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how the point system works. Again, if you're confused, ask, ask in the comments down below. I'm sure there's people who can explain it better than I just explained it. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward, right? All right, so let's go ahead and jump into these two teams here. We'll start with the attackers here. Now, I think the attackers are considered the favorites in this matchup. They are the guerrilla tactics. 
uh, and they, they actually had a record in the regular season of five and one. So they only lost one game in the regular season. And guys, that's really impressive because sometimes uh, some rounds you just pick really crappy factions and you kind of plan to lose. Uh, but the fact that they only lost one round, that is really, really good. So this is a good heavyweight team. Now they're taking on this team over here known as Rice Enjoyers. The Chad Rice Enjoyers. Yeah, you can enjoy... And they're not no virgin wheat enjoyers. They're the rice enjoyers. So, yeah, that's a pretty funny name. Like, first off, I like the name. I respect the name. Uh, but they are actually 3-3. Three and three. They went 3-3 three and three in, the, in the regular season. I think they just barely made the playoffs. But, guys, that's all it takes. They got into the playoffs, and now they're here. Started from the bottom, and now they're here. They're in the, the finale. So, if we actually... We have the stats right here, guys. So, actually... Okay, hold on. Wait. Hold the stats. Let me show you all the teams. So here we have all the teams in their different divisions. And essentially, the way it works during the regular season, they play each team in their division once, and then it's whoever has the most points. I think the top three teams or so. I think it's the top two teams of each division. Something, Or maybe there's like a wild card third team. Anyways, uh, these are all the teams, um, and you can see their stats, and you can see where, uh, where the... Um, the guerrilla tactics and the um, rice enjoyers ended up amongst the other teams. So it's pretty cool that they ended up here in the finale. Uh, now here's the overall stats of their performance. You can see that a lot of the stats here, uh, kills, um, ki uh, killed uh, uh, KD uh, is better for the guerrilla tactics. Uh, they had more wins. Uh, so generally speaking, pretty much all down all these, all these stats here, the, Gorilla Tactics outperformed the um, the Rice Enjoyers. So, uh, definitely Rice Enjoyers. And the cool thing about the Rice Enjoyers, they're a new team. Uh, they're new to the, uh, the, you know, the league. So, this is pretty cool for them to make it. And they certainly are the underdogs here. So, uh, they like I said, their team right here is worth negative six. The attacker's team is worth negative five. So... Uh, with that out of the way, guys. Oh, by the way, hold on. If you want to watch more matches from this season, there's links. Uh, there's a bunch of YouTubers that cover this tournament. So shout out to them for uh, covering the tournament. You can watch their videos down in the video description. Also, um, um, Marketable Skills or is the person that hosts this league. He kind of runs it. He also has a Twitch where he covers the, the matches live and everything. So pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. So anyways, you guys ready? Let's do it. Let's start this battle. Now, the first thing I want to do is check out these units. And guys, it's about to get analytical here. It's about to get all... We're going in deep with the strategy, okay? So let's start with the Romans here. I also loved how they have their siege towers turning the other way. I don't know if that was a mistake or it's because it has something to do with the ballista. The ballista on here, they'll just shoot at whatever. You can't really control what they shoot out. At least I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty certain about that. So maybe he wanted to like save ammo or something. I don't know. It might have been just an accident. But he's got a lot of cohort here ready to go. I mean, the Roman infantry, they're all just really good. Legionary cohort, they're all going to be like really good units. It's going to be tough to deal with. Then they also have some um, levies, which have skirmish capability, which is interesting because they are considered skirmishers, no? Okay, okay. I, I don't know the the rules for the army comp exactly, but uh, I think you can bring three archers plus two short-range skirmish, if I'm not mistaken. Anyways, he's got the Syrian archers. It's like one of the best archers uh, units in the game. And then, of course, we have more cohort here. Uh, so pretty cool stuff. Here's the general. So that's a quick rundown of the Romans. Now, Massacely, or Massilia. No, Massacely. God, I... Desert Rome. I'm just going to call them Desert Rome. They, of course, have the Desert Legionaries. Some slave infantry, mostly for cannon fodder, uh, I assume. And then we've got some heavy Nubian skirmishers. We've got some Desert Legionaries, more Desert Legionaries. They also kind of got their army divided. They're helping the Romans a little bit here, but they're also pushing on this flank here. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if he can manage that pretty well. Um, and then over here, more slave infantry. Mostly using the slave infantry for pushing things. 
classic use of slaves, I guess. Um, doing all the hard labor, pretty much. Uh, which is smart, because it keeps the better troops fresh and away from missiles. He's got a giant ballista and more desert cohorts and legionaries. So, very cool stuff. Let's go ahead and quickly check out the defenders here. Let's start with Bowiei. Bowiei, of course, a barbarian faction. Very good barbarian faction. They have some great infantry. Sword followers. They also have some Celtic warriors as well. So, your typical barbarian... Um, you know, army comp here. Got some slingers, which can be very devastating. We got some sword followers, which is very good infantry. So a lot of sword followers. And then we also, I think that's, I mean, they're kind of mixed around. You see, they've got a core center over here as well. Some sword followers here. Some Oath Sworn, which is like the best of the best in, in their roster. But yeah, very nice mix. A lot of sword followers, which is like not the best infantry, but they're definitely up there. Then we have Tylus. Tylus is infamous for their, um, what are they called? Tribal warriors. They also have some, like, Celtic warriors, but they also have the tribal warriors, which is unique to them. And these guys are pretty nasty. For the price, for what they can do, they look cool. They're just nasty. They are nasty. And that's probably why this faction is probably, like, worth a lot of negative points because it's so good. But again, it's not necessarily, like, the points do matter, but at the same time, you want to win, right? At the end of the day, you got to win. Um, so, yeah, that's the plan here. So, they set up their ballistas up here. Are they firing into the crowd? Like, down into the crowd of infantry? Sorry, I made it sound like they're firing at civilians or something. Uh, but no, it doesn't look like it. It looks like they're holding their shots. Interesting. Either they don't have a shot, or they only shoot when there's infantry. Or they already used up all their ammo, which might be the case. But they're actually gonna just place those towers there and abandon ship. And then, uh, Massilia... Desert Rome is going to knock down the walls here and begin the attack. Now, uh, no surprise that they chose this area. There's literally no defenders. But notice here that the defenders are just, like, kind of okay with it. Uh, I'm kind of surprised they're not moving in. I personally would, like, block here and block here. Maybe they're worried. I don't know what they would be worried about. But they can hold back a lot of troops with two choke points. So I'm kind of surprised that they gave up so much ground. Again, they might move in, but they got to hurry up because here comes the attackers with some slave inf excuse me, slave infantry. Now over here, we've got another tortoise that just brought down the walls. Some uh, towers that are nearby uh, ready to push forward here. But again, they're just kind of holding them where they are. They are pushing some towers up here. What I think they want to do with these is... This is pretty this is pretty sneaky too. They can kind of squeeze them in here. It almost looks like you can't because the slums are kind of in the way. Uh, but no, you can kind of sneak them in. And what I think he's going to try to set up here is some archers. So that might be the case. That might be the reason why the defenders are so far pushed back because they they're just thinking, you know what? We're gonna we could hold here two easy choke points, but they can also set up archers on the walls and get great flanking fire on our defensive units. So maybe that's the reasoning why they fell back. Now, back over here, and, and keep in mind, this is Alexandria, one of my favorite maps. Uh, usually, teams attack here, but again, that's just like your your typical average players when they're playing for fun. So, maybe there's more strategy in terms of attacking this side. Personally, at first glance, this looks more desirable because it's so open, you know? This area is so open. Over here, it's pretty tight. You know, there's a lot of streets and stuff. But uh, maybe they just saw something over here. Maybe they like something over here that they, uh, you know, they will uh, they will take advantage of. But yeah, this is uh, your typical start to a tournament. Pretty slow, but steady. And there's really no need to even knock down this wall. I think it's, it's clear at this point that the defenders are not going to advance forward. They're going to hold where they are. Archers are... S no, these are not archers. These are desert lev levies. The archers are hanging back here. I think they're just waiting. Making sure they set them up in the perfect position. Okay, there they go. Now they're going. Because what they could do, guys... Now, you gotta be careful. Oh, okay. They can go down here. Sometimes you gotta be careful with the walls because you can cut off a retreat. But they can go down there. So, he's gonna set up his archers up on the walls... And then what he could do is go all the way down here and fire. Now, it's risky when you put your archers up on the walls 
because it makes them a big target for defending archers who are on ground level, just easily firing up. So you got to watch out for that. But yeah, so far, they're just mobilizing slowly. So we'll go ahead and speed it up here a little bit. Uh, over here, they've set up towers and kind of abandoned them. They knocked down a wall, but they're not going to use it right away. Which is no surprise. I'm not really seeing. There's a little bit of reserve force over here, but we'll see how that goes. Infantry pushing forward through the gap. we got Romans pushing through the gap now. We've got the cohort, legionaries, you know, all those good guys coming in. Good guys as in they're really, really skilled. So guerrilla tactics is being very... They're keeping up the pace because remember, there's also an hour timer and that's in favor of the defenders, right? If the timer runs out, it's the winners win. So the attackers got to... They got to keep a, a steady pace. I've seen it many times where players will take too much time in the initial start of the battle, which I get it. It's a very delicate part of the battle, but then they just wasted too much time. So sometimes you just got to set up, you know, stay just constantly mobilized. Don't sit around and do nothing. Just keep moving forward and keep pushing your forces to be set up properly and then go in. You know what I mean? Uh, and look at this. They just utterly knocked down this wall. You know? Wow. Anyways, the forces are set up. No clash of infantry yet. No clash of infantry. And we're pretty far into the battle, which might be a little concerning for the attackers. Remember, tick, tock, tick. Uh, time is against them. Time is no one's friend. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's against them. And they've got a... I guess it's the friend of the defenders, right? But anyway, you get what I'm saying. From like a psychological or a philosophical, you know, time's not your... Anyway, so uh, yeah, they, they've they set up their archers. They ran... Like, they, like I said, they ran them down. These are actually skirmishers. These aren't even archers. So my bad. I thought they were archers, but I'm not paying attention. But yeah, the tower's shooting at them. There's some archers set up here. Actually, no, these are swordsmen. But they could have easily set up archers. Oh, they, there they are, the slingers. Slingers are going to be so good against the heavily armored troops. It's going to be pretty sweet. Still no clash of infantry. But we do have some Romans on this side over here. So it looks like the Romans are going to spearhead forward. So guerrilla tactics. They're going to they're gonna take their time here. And you got to, you know, as the rice enjoyers, you got to be thinking like, oh, this is pretty sweet. You know, they're thinking don't engage. Don't do anything. Let them set up here. They, they've completely let them take this this ground here they're like let them set up let them waste some time let's see what they do here look at this they even have some units falling back so we do have some engagement here a little bit of pila and that's why he kind of fell back there a little bit these celtic warriors trying to keep them alive it's either well you, you got to be delicate because you can't just keep falling back because you're going to give up some ground so the question is do you charge in to cancel out their pila or do you try to exhaust their ammo? I mean, there's so many options for them to do. Now, of course, over on this side, the Romans, I think, are going to take a more defensive. I don't think the Romans are going to push here. Because it kind of takes away their advantage. They can easily hold this position with one unit. So, in a sense, the guerrilla tactics kind of have to play defense here. Even though they're on the attack. And I think they're going to just focus on these areas as their spearhead attack. All right, guys, so uh, a lot of minutes have passed, and now, of course, time is an issue, but we can see the timer of the of the replay, and we know that who, we know that one faction will be left standing. It's not going to be a timed victory because the, the, the replay time, if it was like 59 minutes, then maybe they could have lost by time, but we just know by the, you know, the replay. Anyways. There we go. We got a charge. I like this like double double uh, double column with the desert Romans and your normal Romans. I don't know what they were trying to do there, but the Celtic warriors charge in, and this is our first infantry engagement of this battle, and it's a juicy one, guys. It's the Celtic warriors, man, fighting the hearts out. Back over this way, we got Celtic warriors kind of hanging back. They are kind of doing the same thing. Just delaying. Delay, delay, delay. That's what you want to do. Delay. Now, here's the thing. There's not a lot of reinforcements over here to reinforce this Celtic War unit. 
Now this Celtic Warrior Warrior unit is outmatched and outnumbered. So uh, they're losing. So they're gonna need reinforcements pretty quick. But the thing is, I don't think they're gonna reinforce it. You know? I think what they'll do is probably block this off. And then this unit will probably fall back here. And there they go. There they go. It's like he heard me. Spiritually, we connected at that moment. Great minds think alike. So yeah, the, really this Celtic warrior unit, warrior unit is just a speed bump. Again, just buying time. Ooh, look at that. We got the artillery coming in. Actually has a pretty good angle on the enemy's position. Got the African giant ballista. Very cool. Load it up! I love it how their arms are not pairing properly with the poles here. Ready? Yeah! Look at this. The balls of justice. Oh! They got some hits, but that could have been a lot worse, especially with this unit right here that's lined up. But, you know, the chance of, it, of hitting is seems pretty low. There we go. They've broken through, guys. The Celtic uh, unit is gone, so that's one less unit for the defenders. And uh, actually, no, the defenders are going to completely fall back over here. They're going to fall back to this choke point right here. They've also got Tylus over here with some Levy Freeman kind of watching the... The, uh, the walls, I suppose. I, get, I think what they were doing is using their projectiles, potentially. Did they get any kills? No. Well, no. No. So, yeah. They're going to hold right here. Yep. Just like this. And then they're going to fall back and hold the narrow streets over here. And over here as well. If I was Rome, now that you've gained so much control of this area up here, if I was the uh, guerrilla tactics, I would start pushing this way as well. Because if you could... It's going to be tough, though. You can see that they are really heavy-handed here with a lot of reserves around this area. And I think it's because they don't want to lose this gatehouse. Because if they do, it's going to be shooting at them. You know, once the uh, attackers, you know, the guerrilla tactics take it over. So the rice enjoyers are definitely going for... Going for time here. And to be honest, if I didn't know... If this battle was going to end with one army, like one team standing, or if it was going to end through running out of time. If I didn't know, I would say, you know, the attackers run out of time here. Because they are taking their sweet time. Here we go. Here comes a clash of Celtic warriors. Again, finding themselves in the same situation as the other Celtic warrior. Taking on one Roman unit and one desert legionary unit. Look at that. Look at that. The tribesmen moving in. Looking for an opportunity. Oh, yeah. And now they've got some sword followers. So the only thing I can think of with, uh, with the rice enjoyers and Bowie Eye. Oh, oh. There goes some artillery. Woo. Well, all, the only thing I can think of about this is that they're trying. They just use their Celtic warriors as speed bumps, essentially. And they're preserving the sword followers for... A better fight and here comes column formation look at this they're breaking apart they're gonna push down the street they, they're gonna need more because these guys can easily slip in here and that's exactly what they're gonna try to do it's a little awkward oh there's some friendly fire but that's okay miss most or they're just flanking yeah they're just flanking these celtic warriors but they're actually gonna fall back and then we've got reinforcements coming in Yes, we do. Tyla is sending in some tribal warriors. Already the tribal warriors. They're going to storm through this beautiful market and destroy it. You a-holes. Someone worked hard on that market. Could have been me. Anyways, they're going to push up and essentially plug the gap. They're going to reform. These Celtic warriors are screwed. And they know it. Over here, still nothing really going on. There is a tower. Pushing forward some slave infantry. And I think what they're going to do is try to capture or neutralize this arrow tower. And in 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 response, the Celtic warriors are going to go up and prevent that from happening. So good play. Good play on them on their end. All right. Tribal warriors taking on legionary cohort. 
The Romans are losing this matchup. Like I said, the Tribal Warriors are very good. Very, very good. And here comes a push here. Now we got Desert Legionaries. Notice how they're just like cycling in and out troops. They also have artillery support that's softening up the Tribal Warriors. Maybe their mindset here is like, hey, let's send in a cheaper unit. Oh, they turn their backs on the enemy and they take advantage of it, throwing some Pila to the backs of those Tribal Warriors. But what I was, what I was going to say is that maybe they were trying to... Um, uh, what were they going to do? They were going to use a cheaper unit to engage these tribal warriors. So if there is some friendly fire, it's not as big of a deal. But yeah, they're going to have to send up reinforcements, which they are. So the question is for, for guerrilla tactics, do they engage over here? I, I think they will. Once they see a lot of the defenders commit a lot of units to this main fight, I think they will send more units down this way. And do they ever engage over here? I would say yes. Now, remember, the town center is right here. So it would be useful to kind of send a couple troops down this way to push on the other side. But if it... I mean, this is a lot of units that you have to fight through. So we'll see. We'll see. But for now, let's go back to the grind fight over here in the streets. Oh. The tribal warriors are winning wow these tribal warriors are so tough guys they are after getting hit with arrows with artillery they're going in especially that guy very very nice artillery still coming down nice little victory there well, i guess they swapped out so many kills 65 and this one has 32 so, pretty decent. Pretty decent. And remember, they're playing for the clock. That's fine. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Rome is pushing. The guerrilla tactics are going for it. And they're going with some epic units. we got some cohort here. The Makati cohort. So, he's sending in some cheap troops. I guess he's just kind of testing out the waters here. Letting the cheap troops take, you know, the brunt of the enemy javies. Oh, look at this. Look how, look how epic this Roman army is. Look how cool they look. Oh, man. Got them all lined up there. It almost looks like over here, this, like, you see the, the desert Roman faction? It almost looks like it's still Rome, but of like a different company or something. A different legion. You know, so they have different shields. I don't know. That'd be cool if there was more stuff like that in Rome. But yeah, they're in a little bit of a standoff here. A Mexican standoff. Yeah, so they're not, they're not engaging. I think they're just going to throw Pila at each other. There's some troops in the center, though, having at it. He's like, what you say about my mother, mate? You what, mate? They took him out. There we go. Rome decides to go in. And this is where the real killing is going to happen here, guys. This is the epic kill zone. And I say that because it's so open. So a lot of units are going to engage at once. And I ain't talking about engagement for marriage. I'm talking about engaging swords. And I'm not ta I'm talking about real swords. You know. But yeah, there they go. They're putting up a good fight. Over on this side. It's slowed down a little bit from the attacking. They're just more focusing over here. They're just kind of focusing on one fight at a time. Over here, they've begun the battle as well. Very nice. So you can see the guerrilla tactics really trying to chip away at the defenders. And then you see the opposite. The opposite from rice enjoyers trying to basically um the rice enjoyers trying to uh you know just maintain their lines and the delay as long as possible
They're going to fall back here, reform. I think they're trying to get some of their heal off, which they do get some of it off, or their javies. I guess they don't really have Pila. There you go. Nice little volley there from the Romans, and they clash. We've got Celtic Warriors trying to defend the gap, and we're getting a recycle of moves here. Oh, they're getting flanked. They sent in a unit of slave infantry, which is going to open up an opportunity for this unit to break through the gap. And I think they're hoping to quickly break this unit, which they are breaking them, but not in time. And here comes Desert Legionary to keep this... They basically just split the Red Sea right here, guys. They can now send units in here. If they send another unit, they could easily wipe these two defenders out. Back over this way. Look at this. Oh, my gosh. Like I said, guys, this was going to be the bloodbath, and it certainly is. A lot of units fighting here, and it's starting to look like it's getting a little too much. A little too much for the Rice Enjoyers. Guerrilla tactics moving in. But tactics that aren't that guerrilla like. Just brute numbers, brute force. Look at that. They are just. Oh, this is a problem, guys. This is a major problem. They're trying to maintain their line. If we look at the tactical view, they're trying to maintain their line. But you can see there's so many troops here, and they're about to punch through. They are about to punch through. Wow. Here comes more sword followers. They're just throwing whatever they got. Try to maintain this line. All they're hoping for is that eventually some of these Romans and desert Romans will break. Over here, still no push. They're more focused on the other parts of the battle. Over on this side, they have broken through, guys. Like I said, they parted the Red Sea. And now they're free to travel. They're free to move. Free to move. And now uh, we've got the defenders kind of reforming further back. Which is fine. But, well, they still have a lot of units here. So they should be able to hold for a while here. This is not an issue. Really, the biggest issue is here. Break off! Here we go. More and more reinforcements are coming in, though. More and more reinforcements. This poor palm tree just got pelted with javies. Tribal warriors moving in. They are moving in, folks. Here comes more and more units pushing forward. Both sides are just sending everything they got to break through. And once again, more breaking from the Celtic Warriors. I mean, the Celtic Warriors are outmatched, but there we go. Finally, they're breaking a cohort unit from the Roman side. There we go. Oh, both sides just throwing whatever they got to this front line. Truly the bloodiest part of the battle absolute chaos over here the romans have kind of pushed forward but they got to be careful you can't push too far up because then you can get outflanked which is kind of what happening with these thracian peltis still a lot of reserves though still a lot of reserves right here and now it looks like they're pushing units up on the walls what do we got here oh this could be huge they should have left a unit up here to defend because now they're going to set up skirmishers. They're going to try to neutralize the gate. Not only that, they're going to be able to throw down some hate down on the defenders. And that is going to severely weaken their defense. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Look at this. Oh no. They are getting chopped into pieces. More like poked. They're getting poked, looking like Swiss cheese. Back over here again, no advance. I don't think they're going to go for it. I think they just don't have enough troops over here, so they're going to focus all their attention over to this front. So now the attackers, guerrilla tactics, they're going to focus their forces 
Over on this side at the gate. And they're going to keep pushing. Because they want control of the gate. If they can get control of the gate, they can send in reinforcements that way. It's just another uh, opportunity for them to, to flush in more troops. Flash, flash flood warning. The Red Army, the Romans, on the way. Uh, but they're starting to break these tribal warriors. Now they're sending in mercenary Thracian Peltis to fight in melee. It won't do a terrible job, but it's looking kind of desperate for the rice enjoyers. All right, now over on this side, it does look like, look at this, it actually looks like the defenders have pushed forth. They push forward and they are engaging the Romans. The Romans send one unit as a sacrificial unit here and then they're gonna fall back and just probably hold this point. I, you know, that's a good move from the defenders, from the rice enjoyers, because uh, they have the edge in terms of numbers over on this front. So you definitely wanna take advantage of that. And guys, we're down to the last like, uh, 17 minutes of this battle. Can you believe it already? Just going by so fast. And it's still hard to tell who's going to win this one. The balance of power is pretty damn even. So nobody's taken a huge edge over the other team. So it's still tough to say. But, I, you know, I do, I do get concerned about this gate here. And then, of course, don't forget, they've got these skirmishers up here. It's really good use of them. They might want to set up some slingers. They're out of ammo now. So at least they don't have to worry about that junk. But there they go. They're going to take... Pretty soon, they're going to take control of this gate. That's huge. They just took the gate. Not officially, but unofficially took the gate. Well, let's not forget, they look at this, they've got some more reinforcements back here. And on the defending side, guys, I mean, they've got some reinforcements, but they're starting to run out. They are starting to run out. Now it looks like, I think over here, again, the defenders are kind of pushing the fight over here, sending in the tribal warriors. Unfortunately for these tribal warriors, they're losing. Back over this way. Look at this. Yeah, the rice enjoyers are pushing back. They've had enough. They've got the numbers. They're also going to send some reserves back over towards the center. They probably support this fight up here. But yeah, let's, let's see these guys get aggressive. Push them back. Because you can try to corner them around here. Because you can see that the attackers are concentrating most of their forces at this front right here. And it makes sense. But guys, it's not looking good. Y honestly, the defenders should probably fall back here. Give it up. Give it up. No. Don't charge in. I would have fallen back, formed up a battle line, then tried to save some of the units stuck in the fight here. But you know what? Maybe they see that, hey, we can get these guys stuck in here. And then if we can win over here, we can get behind them. Maybe that's why he's so... You know, they have tunnel vision here. I'm really trying to keep these guys locked in here. But I just don't know. I just don't know. Alright, so Levy Freeman coming around this way. We've got some sword followers. Very good unit. Over on this front, I think... Oh, they're going to win over here. They're, oh, this, see, this is what I'm talking about. They need minor victories like this. They're going to win here. I know it's just slave infantry, but they're going to be able to get behind the Roman uh, legionary cohort. A great unit they're going to get rid of. And what I would do... Yeah, this is good. Yeah, okay, good. It's putting pressure on the Romans. So the rice enjoyers might be able to pull out a victory here if they can keep this up. But I do believe that they need to call it quits here and fall back. Like, probably fall back all the way to here. That way they can still support this fight. Get running! I don't know. They're just pulling back one unit. It's going to be up to these sword followers to maintain the line. 
What a fight. What a fight. Now we got the general rolling up. We got some archers up on the walls. Yeah, I don't think we're, you know, now that I see these archers up here, I think they're waiting for the enemy, for the rice enjoyers to push up. And we do have some Romans going around the flank here. That could be a problem. Honestly, what I would do is clean up the Romans, which they did, and just regroup everything for the town center. Well, there is a rule. Okay, hold on. I think there is a rule that you have to only like X amount of units can be used at the town center. So keep that in mind. There are some rules that might change the strategies here. So you might be thinking, well, that was stupid. They should have just retreated everyone at the town center. Well, you can't. Okay, it's against the rules. I think you're I think you only allowed six units. And that even includes archer units with no ammo. So Alright, so what we got here, we got the general moving in, and guys, we're starting to see a shift in the balance of power. It is starting to go in favor of the Roman team. The guerrilla guerrilla tactics. Desert Cohort letting loose. Using up their jabbies. And then we got the sword followers kind of charging in to try to cancel that. But this is a tough fight for the sword followers. And they are certainly losing this battle. They're outnumbered 2 to 1. And they're also getting hit by arrow towers in the back here. It's just not a good sight for them. So yeah, I think... Jeez, this is going to be tough. Yeah, you could try. I mean, these the archers are off the walls now. You could try pushing. Pushing down here. Um, I don't know what happened to that Roman unit that was over here. I guess it fell back. Hmm. Just seeing if there's any reserves. I don't see any. If we look at this from a tactical point of view. Yeah, it's uh, just at first glance. You can see how many more units the Romans have here. So... Yeah. It's gonna be tough. Going to be tough. Now, I do like the Romans, what the Romans are doing here. They are pushing forward. It, for a second, this general over here, the Oathsworn, we're thinking about holding. I think he's just gonna hold the rear over here, it, I assume. But this is a good move by the Romans because they can get around and flank, but it's not really necessary, but they should still do it. And here come some Roman forces ready to, looks like, square off against uh, the rice enjoyers. They've got some sword followers. Got some levy freemen and another unit of sword followers. So it's a tough match. I mean, the sword followers are no joke. So is this enough to defeat this force? I don't think so. They might have to send more, which is what they're doing. They are sending more units over to help out on this front. There they go. There they go. All right, so the units are moving in. Got cohort. They're probably going to go down this flank. Still no engagement over here, but they're preparing. So we're at a little bit of a slower part, part of the battle, so we'll do some fast-forwarding here as we watch the units shift and move. Okay, hold on. It might That might change soon. Looks like he might be going in. No, no, the defenders are going to let him have it. Maybe. Oh, uh, let's see. No, they're going to fall back. This was all just a game. Just the game. Do you think this is a game to you? So they're going to keep falling back. And they're going to keep chasing. There we go. There's the engagement. We got Levy Freeman, but it's just Levy Freeman, guys. They're not going to hold for much longer. They're not good enough. Oh. Yeah, they're going to fall fast. So they've fallen back once again over to this flank. Oh, it's sworn. Yep. Old Sworn ready to hold right here. Got an archer unit here. We got a general watching this side. 
So they are, I mean, this is going to be tough for them, guys. Is it, is it possible that they could win? Yeah, sure, it's possible. Is it plausible? Probably not. I mean, they got to pull off something really crazy. I think they got to kill a general. They got to, like, do an epic flank and get behind a bunch of units. I just don't see it happening, but it could be possible for the Rice Enjoyers. We got to fight in the market. Sword followers putting up a great fight. Putting up a great fight. A lot of reserves over here. A lot of archers. Could be a major problem. Here comes the general. He's probably going to use some general abilities. Let's see. I don't know, like second wind or something. Second wind is so deadly. Oh. Battle rhythm. There we go. Look at this like double column thing. They love doing that. They love doing that. The infamous guerrilla tactic. Alright, so. They just lost over here. They're going to throw in some Peltis, it looks like. And they're like, ah, we're not having any of this. They're already breaking. So now it's up to the general, guys. It's up to the general. And yeah, the Romans and uh, their ally, Desert Rome, they're, they're taking their time. I mean, they're definitely fighting. They're keeping the pedal to the metal kind of thing. Or keeping up the pace. Not pedal to the metal. They're keeping up the pace. They're, you know, they're still fighting. Uh, we got seven minutes, pretty much, left in the battle replay. So, this is the moment right here. If we're going to see the Rice Enjoyers win this one, they got to turn it around, like, right here. And... The sword followers are losing slightly. Desert legionaries taking a mouthful. Is that weird? That kind of weird. That's weird. Anyways, they're going to push forward. And sure enough, I think we're going to... There we go. Yeah, they're going to charge. I thought we were going to see the double column thing. This other Roman unit was going to go in. I think they will go in eventually. Archer's now opening fire. This is a desperate stand, guys. We are in desperate stand mode. And it's like this Oathsworn guy has to sit here. Because, like, he's got a unit here and a unit here. He could easily flank around. That could be a big problem. But it looks like they're all going in right here. I mean, even as the Roman player, I wouldn't even be this careful. I'd be like, it's over. I mean, look at that bounce of power. It's looking like a cigarette right now. Not good for the defenders. Back. And then back over this way, the Romans using their, using their, yeah, that's a problem. And they have the luxury of doing that. And you can see, uh, yeah, the tribal wars are like, ah, screw it. I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm not going to sit back here and just get pelted. But it's at a cost because now units can flank around. But there's really nothing he could have done there. I guess you can say, yeah, I could send in these units. Oh, look at this. Oh, I don't know. Ooh. Now they find themselves surrounded like three different ways. Those tribal warriors basically got cut off, cut off there. They're trying. Is Oath Sworn 90 kills? They're still fighting over on this side, too. That's pretty impressive. Sword followers losing decisively at this point. They have 86 kills. All right, generals charging in. This is their last desperate hope for any kind of victory here. Last little hope here, guys. Now we got the Oathsworn moving. Look at this. I think he's going to move around and try to put a flanking maneuver on him. I don't think it's going to work, but he's doing everything he can. Oh, the Slingers are going to get some good hits here. I like the use of the Slingers. Got him out in the streets here. But the Romans just have too many units to make this work. 
There's nothing you can really do about it. Still have not broken through this street. This general has been putting up a great fight. The Oath Sword now has 127 kills. They've broken through over on this side, though, guys. This is huge because there's literally nothing waiting for them. The general is going to be able to maneuver and go for back, back cap, or he can go for charging the archers. And we do still have the Oath Sworn here, but guys, I just don't see how the Rice Enjoyers can win this one. As soon as this general falls, I think it's going to be about over. I mean, it's pretty much over now. Here comes the Roman general, and there's nothing these archers can do. Whew. Slingers, not archers. My bad. You know what I mean. Archers, slingers, tomato, tomato. All right, here comes Bowie Eyes general. He's got to go on a headhunting spree and just wipe everyone out. Is it possible? Maybe. Maybe not. There goes Pilus' uh, general. There they go. And that's going to cause a massive chain round. Guys, I think it's safe to say that this battle is over here. We'll go ahead and fast forward. And uh, all we're watching now is just the remaining uh, Bowie Eye as they fight on. Uh, but this was really fun. This was just pure infantry control. You know, the Roman infantry is just so nasty. They just really controlled this fight. You know, it's just a good... It was a good grind fight. And I don't know what they could have done. Oh, where the heck am I? I don't know what they could have done better there. I think... I, I would have... It would have been interesting to see if they held, like, here and here. And how that would work out. I mean, they would still have to worry about this area over here. But it would be interesting, right? So... A tough fight for the Rice Enjoyers. But is it over? Absolutely not. So this is how uh, both teams can win. So basically, if the um, if the guerrilla tactics, if they win the next battle, they win. The points don't really matter because the you know the the rice enjoyers didn't get any points. They can't compare points. Now for the rice enjoyers to win this, they have to win the next round with more points than the guerrilla tactics won here. So the guerrilla tactics won with negative five points so what that means is that the rice enjoyers have to have negative four points all right so if they build a team that's worth the negative four points and wins the next round they win the tournament so that's how the point system works guys so there's still a chance the rice enjoyers can win this if you're you know a rice enjoyer stan uh, or if you're rooting for the guerrilla tactics, really with the guerrilla tactics, here's, here's two ways the guerrilla tactics can win. They either win the next battle or they lose, but the rice enjoyers have negative six points, you know? So they end up sure they won, but they won with negative six and they end up with negative five because they won negative five here. So that's how they can, uh, that's how they can do it guys. So let's end the replay. Look at the results. I will be uploading the next round, um, soon couple days so look out for that but look at the kills here everybody pretty much you know did all that they could here really good defense here by nice rice and they do love their rice huh but gg to gorilla tactics this was the first round we'll see what happens in the second one guys don't forget about all the links down in the video description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one guys goodbye